and some Anavik. Yeah, thanks, everyone. We're going to start with some opening remarks from Coach Locks, and then we'll take your questions. Coach? Sure. Thanks, uh, Dustin. Um, number one, you know, I can't even put in, you know, to words of just how proud I am of this team. You know, as I told the seniors uh, before the game, you know, we'll forever be indebted for those guys because they really have uh, put this thing on a really solid foundation that I think uh, shows the trajectory of what our program can be. Uh, we've come a long way as a program since 2019. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work, hasn't been easy, uh, but these guys have really bought in uh, to what winning football, what you have to do to have winning football. Um, the culture, um, the way you have to work, the habits and behaviors you got to create. You know, to send the seniors out with a significant bowl win, a winning season, it means the world to me. And, and to me, you know, these guys, like I said, will, I will forever be indebted for the leadership that they've shown. You know, this season was a huge step uh, for our program, but I still believe again that the best is ahead. And what today shows, as you saw young players uh, making plays for us, you saw our quarterback again, continue to show the consistency, our defense stepped up, but it really leads me to believe that the best is ahead for our program. And I'm looking forward to continuing to lead us as we take that next step. Um, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm, and why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country, as well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jack Litch Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Every single lawyer at the Jack Litch Law Group was honored by best lawyers in America. In the Jack Litch Law Group was the best decision anyone in my family has ever made, other than my decision to play football at the University of Maryland. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Hey, Coach. Um, just wanted, you know, you mentioned obviously a great way to send the seniors out. Um, Daryl Jones in particular, you know, had a very strong game and kind of, you know, scoring his first two touchdowns of his career. What has his presence meant to this team? And what has, what has his, you know, leadership kind of meant the last few years? And, you know, what do you, what do you, um, what do you have to say about his, uh, his big performance today? Well, one, I'm, I'm happy he was able to leave here. You know, every Friday I do bed check. And I always stop in and see Daryl. And we've been waiting a long time for a game like this. And, you know, it's only fitting that he would get it in his last game as a Terp and, you know, score two touchdowns after not scoring for four years. And, you know, I think it just shows, again, the resiliency that this senior group has shown. Um, you know, he's kind of a byproduct of a group of guys that maybe have been through a lot, but just have kept their heads down, continued to work. Um, you know, really happy for Daryl that he was able to finish on such a strong note. And uh, I know he played a major role in getting this thing started. So I'm proud of Daryl, proud of him. Again, kind of like the rest of the seniors that we're sending out of here, uh, just have shown tremendous leadership through adversity, through tough times, kind of just kept their head down, chin up. And, and today we talked about just keep punching and he made some plays. Next, we'll go to Dave Preston. Mike, congratulations on the win. Uh, the third quarter, it was still a, it was a two score game coming out of intermission. I think you guys outgained them 187 yards to eight in that third quarter. Uh, what did you feel was uh, from the sidelines? What did you feel start to turn in that third quarter? The play of your team. You know, I really think it started at the end of the first half. You know, we only had 19 plays on offense, and you know they had some drives where they used up the clock. I think their goal was to try to shrink the game and limit the opportunities we had. And so right before the half, we made the decision, even when we were backed up, was to try to steal some points since we knew we'd get the ball in the second half. And it, it really paid dividends to walk off the field with the field goal and then to get the, the, the second half, get the ball. But, you know, again, our, our team did a great job on offense of just 
sticking to what we wanted to get done. Our quarterback stayed really consistent with his execution. And, uh, you know, the guys up front gave him time to make the throws. And we also were able to run the ball. And I think that played a major part in it, warmed down a little bit. And Mike, it also took you guys, it, it took a while for you guys to get in gear on both sides of the ball, but you had those two big plays in the first half, the, the punt return for a touchdown, the 70 yard strike. How huge were those plays? You, you've, you've talked early and often the season about getting those explosive plays. You had one on special teams and one on offense in that first half. Yeah. And, you know, we talked in our pregame deal with meeting with the coaches, uh, how special teams during bowl games, special teams become really important. It's a way to, to possibly steal points. And, uh, you know, we felt that Tarheeb has been really close and we just hadn't given them the, haven't held guys up enough to get it started in the day. You know, we did a really good job when we talked about going back to the fundamentals. We even, we did that with the special teams and I think it paid off uh, with the punt return. You know, obviously the winning formula for, for winning games is pretty simple. It's limit turnovers on offense and generate explosive plays. And then on the defensive side, limit their explosive plays, which I thought we did today. And then also, you know, do a really good job of uh, trying to create some turnovers. And, you know, we scored on defense today. We created a couple turnovers. And, you know, I think that's where you saw the, the, us really take the next step. Next word of Ryan McFadden with the Sun. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Uh, hey, Coach, can you hear me? I can hear you, Ryan. Hey, Coach. Uh, first, congrats on the win. But uh, my question for you is we saw a lot of young guys. Uh, get some action today, like Roman Hemby, uh, CJ DeFree uh, in the fourth quarter. So what was your, um, what did you see out those guys and what was it like to get those guys some experience um, in, in the bowl game today? Yeah, I think you saw him way before the fourth quarter. You know, Roman Hemby was back there returning kicks from the start. Uh, Antoine Littleton played in the first half, Devin King, um, CJ DePree. You know, the way we took advantage of these uh, however many practices, uh, you know, prior to the bowl game, you know, we talked about this wasn't necessarily the finish of the 21 season, but actually the start of the 22 season. And I think what you saw today with Roman and Antoine Littleton and, you know, even Kobe McDonald, who's played a lot for us, the Devin Kings of the world, is that we've got some really talented young players. Our coaches did a really good job uh, with the 15 practices, 14, however many, many it was of really developing these guys. And I think it really paid off. And you saw kind of what I talk about when I say our future's bright, that we've got some talented young players and, you know, it was a way to, great way to start off the 22 season. Next we'll go to Lauren Rush. Hi coach. You've had a lot of success as an assistant coach in your career. And now as a head coach, this was definitely one of your stronger seasons. And so for you in your career, what, has this season meant for you and what, you know, going into 2022 with this momentum from this bowl game, what does that mean to you as a coach? You know, the biggest thing for me is it's about those kids in the locker room, you know, as a coach, whether I have success or whether we fail, it's, you know, these kids really did a great job of just kept, of keep fighting. It's a lot like what my career has been about, you know, as a head coach, you know, keep my head down, continue to fight. Um, rely on the guys in that locker room. You know, it's really none of our business what people outside the program think about us. But I, I have a lot of faith, a lot of confidence in, in, in myself as a leader, but also in those kids. And, and this is what we recruit them for to Maryland, um, to develop them, not just as great football players, but great men. And, you know, at the end of the day, if, if I'm doing that, I feel pretty confident, uh, confident about the success that we'll have. And um, again, it's not about me, it's about them. We'll go to Garrett next. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? I can. Uh, just what did you see out of Talia today, and what does a performance like this one do for him going into 2022? Well, I hope it quiets some of the critics and maybe he get a little bit of the respect that I think he deserves as a quarterback. Um, I feel like we've got one of the best quarterbacks in the league, if not the country. Um, you know, as I said before, you know, we, we wouldn't be in this situation that we're in with the winning season if it wasn't for Talia. Now, obviously, 
he's not the finished product. And I think you'll continue to see him get better as with all aspects of our program, but really proud of him and the way he's responded, um, the way he uh, has a positive impact on others, his teammates, very unselfish. And, and like I said, hopefully, uh, as I said, this is the start of the 22 season and maybe we can get him a, a little bit of respect in terms of being one of the top quarterbacks in the country, which I really feel and believe he is. Jacob Richmond. Hey coach, thanks so much for giving you giving us a couple minutes of your time. Um, kind of on the defense, they didn't know exactly what they'd be facing going into uh, the game today. Just talk about how they adjusted and how they read to Virginia Tech. Yeah, you know, Brian, Brian Williams did a really good job calling it today and, and B. Stu did a great job of helping organize it. Um, you know, we tried to keep it simple. Um, it came down our execution. We did a really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage, which I think is where it started. Um, we did a good job on the back end with our eye control, gave up a couple of big plays where we were in position to make the play, but didn't make it. Um, but to me, this is the way we got to play team defense. And, you know, I thought they did a great job running to the ball, playing with energy. Uh, we tackled well for the most part, which is usually a concern when you come off such a long layoff. But, uh, you know, our defensive staff had them ready to go. They played with great energy, and I really liked the energy and effort that the defense played with. And when we struggled on offense early and li had limited plays, you know, they just kept pounding away. We have time for a couple more. We'll go to Bruce Posner next. Yeah, Coach, first of all, congratulations. I feel so good for you, all right, because this, this is really a marquee win. The whole nation's watching. The one thing that, about the Rutgers game and this game is all of a sudden you're coaching a disciplined team. No pass interference calls. Nobody jumped offside. Uh, Delia, no groundings. What happened in the past few weeks? Did that extra month really help this team out a lot of practice? Yeah, I, I don't think we were that perfect. I think we did have a couple of unforced, um, you know, non-competitive penalties. But I think what you see is what happens with a young team um, those penalties disappear with experience. And, you know, we've kind of made a, a decision that we're going to play a bunch of young players because it's not just about just this game and this season. It's about the trajectory of our program as a whole moving forward. And the only way you get better is by playing. Um, it sucks to sit back and, and see young players make these type of mistakes. But as I've said before, it's part of the maturation process. And I think what you're starting to see is these guys cleaning up some of that stuff. Uh, the extra time, again, our coaches really did a good job of uh, uh, having these guys ready to play. Uh, but wasn't perfect, but definitely was a step in the right direction as far as will we be that discipline team that we talked about at the beginning of the year. Go to Tyrell next. Um, hi, Coach. Um, again, congratulations. Um, I saw that, like, your defense is very dominant throughout the game. Um Players like Nick Cross and Ruben um, uh, were all over the field. How were you able to get um, your defense to focus or stay focused throughout the game, especially during that time where you were only up um, by two scores? Yeah, you know what? We talked all week about just keep punching. Um, something good happens, keep punching. Something bad happens, keep punching. Um, our standard is we don't play to the scoreboard. We just play the next play. And, you know, our defense did a really good job of doing that. Um, you know, even when we did have the opportunities on the offensive side, we gave up maybe some yardage on defense, but they, they, they kept punching and they got stops. They got off the field. They held them to field goals. And to me, you know, like I said, Brian Williams and Brian Stewart and that whole defensive staff really did a good job of putting our players in the best position to execute and, and to play the way we played today. And so, you know, congrats to our defense and, and great job to the defensive staff. And our last one, we'll go to Michael Farah. Hi, Coach. Two-part question here for you. You mentioned your seniors. What's the biggest thing you're going to remember about this class? And for you, you know, I meant to talk to this with some of the tech guys. Not a lot of the people got to play some bowl games. You guys got to play in Yankee Stadium. What, what's that experience like for you and your staff to play in Yankee Stadium being in being in New York? Yeah, to start, you know, what, what does this senior class mean to me? I mean, as I've said, I mean, this, this was all about them. Um, you know, we had a Winners take all game against Rutgers. Uh, the seniors did a tremendous job of leading the charge from us and leading from the front. 
Um, they've had every opportunity, maybe with the way some of the games were played out near the end, to 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 not to fold. Um, they never did it, and they just kept coming to work, and they kept pulling people along with them. And so, to me, as I said, this group really, to me, is the one that will forever be indebted. They've been through a lot as a a group. It's been well talked about. We know all about it, the things that they've had to endure, but what they've just shown is the resiliency. And to me, that's the Terp way. You know, it's never going to be easy. They understand what hard is, and they kept pulling guys along with them. You know, as far as playing in iconic Yankee, Yankee Stadium, uh, the new air pinstripe bowl, you know, this I've been to a lot of bowl games and uh, some big ones, and, and the way they ran this thing all week long was a first-class bowl event. Our players had a tremendous experience here, and, you know, the icing on the cake is playing in Yankee Stadium where so many champions have played in and, and – Again, you know, thanks to the new era pinstripe bowl people for uh, putting one hell of a bowl on for our team. And it's something, like I said, uh, sets the trajectory for where this program could be. All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you. We're going to have wide receiver Daryl Jones, defensive back Tarheeb still joining us.